Today I read a book called The Golden Statue Plot in the Geronimo Stilton series. Let's go right into it. A perfect hand! It was Monday morning and I went to work wearing movie star sunglasses and a perfect tan. Well, um, an almost perfect tan. I said hello to everyone and rushed to my office. Oh, I'm sorry, let me introduce myself. My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton. I run the Rudolph's Gazette, the most famous newspaper on Mouse Island. Anyway, where was I again? Oh yes. As I scampered by my staff, I heard them all whispering, Love the glasses! So cool! I closed the door to my office behind me with a sigh of release. Then I turned on all the lights and began to work without taking off my sunglasses. Okay, I know you're wondering why I was acting like some sort of famous celebrity. Well, I'll tell you. It happened that weekend when I went to the beach. I fell asleep in the sun for hours and hours. Too bad I forgot to take off my sunglasses. When I woke up, I was left with ridiculous white marks around my eyes. I looked like a reverse panda. I was so embarrassed. I decided that there was only one thing for me to do. I had to keep my sunglasses on at all times. I wore them at the supermarket. I wore them on the subway and I wore them to work. Of course, in order to read anything in my office, I had to turn all the lights on, even though it was middle of the day. What a waste of energy. I felt terrible. The next morning, I felt even worse. When I went to the office, my whole staff was wearing sunglasses just like me. And they had also turned all the lights on, even though it was sunny. Holy jeez! I had started a trend, a trend of wasting energy. Plus, I felt like I was working with a bunch of secret agents, like my friend Ook. I should have spoken up, but I was still too embarrassed. Things will get back to normal sooner or later, right? I thought... Wrong. Instead, things began to spiral right out of control. A few days later, my crazy trend was spreading like soft cheese on a cracker. Soon, all the mice in the city were wearing dark sunglasses. They wore them in their homes, on the street, everywhere. And they kept the lights blazing day and night. Before long, so much electricity was being used in New Mill City that there was a total blackout. Everything electrical shut down. Since I couldn't work, I decided to take a walk by the water to think. As I, start, I, as I stared out the Mouse Island Statue of Liberty, also known by many as Mousy Liberty, I thought about what the statue stood for. Freedom. Yes, freedom to be your own mouse. I looked at my reflection in the water. Then I took off my sunglasses and put them in my pocket. It was time to let everyone see the real me. Wacky suntan and all. I was glad I could go back to being myself. I still felt awful about wasting so much electricity. Suddenly I was hit with an idea. I could write a book about the importance of saving energy. But before I tell you that story, I want to tell you another one. This one is about electricity too. And it takes place on go Cat Island. It all started when Counter Drone 3 was kept of Catania, the king of the pirate cast, discovered they were having electrical energy problems too. But let me start at the beginning. Who turned out the lights? It was a quiet, peaceful evening at Fort Feline on Cat Island. Author Wild Whiskers, the pirate publisher of the Cat Island Courier, the most famous newspaper on Cat Island, was relaxing in his tower. He put on his soft mouth for slippers and sank into his favorite posture with his book, Catnip Soup for the Pirate Soap. Then he turned on some soothing music and sighed, Oh, what a perfect life! But then the lights went out and the music stopped. Frozen fish fritters! What's going on? asked Oscar Yout. This is the third time today the power has gone down. Itchy, Oscar's faithful brother. Butler came rushing in. I can't figure out what's wrong, sir. The electrical system seems fine, he reported. Furious, Oscar closed his book. Get me the phone, a cheesy hissed. I need to call my cousin Catterdon. I don't know how that cat got to be king of the parrot cat. He's not exactly the smartest cat in the alley, and no. The butler coughed. Um, sir, the phone doesn't work either, he replied. Waste, waste, waste. 
Meow! Oscar Street. Then he go dressed and stomped down to Captain Drone's quarters. The entire floor was completely dark. What a disaster! Oscar said to himself, Without electricity, I can't turn on the, the copier to print my newspaper. Suddenly, a furious yowl rang out from the greatest great council chamber. Fistering flea bites! I've had it! It was Catadrone, the king of the pirate cats. He had called together all of his feline officers and the scientists who work at the cat lab. Something needs to be done about this energy situation. Waste, waste, waste! He shrieked. Would it kill anyone to remember to turn off the life order's claw sharpener once in a while? We are we're only broke trying to pay the electric and gas company. The amount of money left in the Imperial Vault couldn't even pay for a quarter of a fish sandwich. Just then, Counter Drone spotted Oscar in the corner of the room. And you, cousin, the king continued. Those printers for a newspaper are going non stop. Yes, well, Oscar started to protest. Even though he knew it was no use, his cousin had always hated the paper. Before Oscar could go in, a slim young female cat strode into the room. It was Tercilla, Catadrone's spoiled teenager daughter. Daddy, who turned off the electricity? I desperately need to deep condition my fur and I'll need the electric fur dryer when I'm done. What's going on? Three goes movie night. I'll tell you what's going on, Catadronist. Everyone has been wasting so much electricity and food around here that we have run out of money to pay our bills. Until one of you figures out a way to get us some gold, I've taken matters into my own paws and turned off the power. Gaps and sad meowing rose from the crowd. Oh, don't be such a bunch of kittens, Caradron scolded. We can use candles instead of light bulbs, and instead of driving everywhere, we can walk. It's great exercise. Then the king added under his breath. So, of course, I will be pushed in the royal carriage because I'm already in great shape. Then he stood up, tripped over his own tail, and tumbled down the stairs. Monzo, Felix, and Boost, his trusty assistants, rushed to help him. At that moment, one of the soundists from the cat lab stood up. It was Dr. Regina Redford. Your Excellency. I hate to complain, but you turned off the electricity just as we were perfecting a new anti flea portable shower system, she began. Oh yeah, but try getting stuck in an elevator for an hour, interrupted the slime with scar snout. At least your favorite scallop, favorite ice cream didn't melt in your freezer, Tomcat Pat whined. Who cares about ice cream, Hill? Sorry, Hawpaw snorted. I was in the middle of baking a gourmet catnip casserole. Enough, Catar drone shrieked. I can't take any more of this whining. I don't care about your shower system, your elevator, or your melted ice cream. I just told you we've got to figure out a way to pay our energy bills or invent some other way to make electricity. Until then, I'm keeping you in the dark. There goes movie night, Tomcat Pat sniffled, but Catar drone wasn't listening. Yes, Sidlet settled up to Hilary Hoppoff. Maybe you can make that catnip casserole over an open fire, he suggested. Just the thought of some tasty catnip had the king drooling like a rabbit stray cat. Ready or not, Carter Drone was still dreaming of catnip when all of a sudden a tiny torpedo came rolling into the room and slammed into his round belly. The king crashed to the ground in a terrified help. Help! Ass assassination attempt! Wars, save me! He cried. But when he looked up, he realized the torpedo was none other than his youngest daughter, Kitty, who was zipping around the room on her inline case. Kitty, what are you doing here? It is way past your bedtime. Plus, I'm in the middle of a meeting, the king scolded. Kitty grinned, ducking behind her father. Sorry, Pop, she squeaked, but we're playing hide and seek and scout and just around the corner. Just then, a second kitchen kitten came carrying in the room on a blue skateboard. It was Scout, Kitty's twin brother. 
Ready or not, the kitten cried, heading straight for a counter drill. Boing! A second later, he slammed into the king's belly, bouncing off it with a loud boing. Once again, counter drone crashed to the floor, but this time the king's advisors were all yelling with laughter. After all, it wasn't every day that the prior cast got to see the king being made a fool of by two excitable little kittens. Counter drone was fooling. No phone? Harry Drone stood up, trying to unsuccessfully to fix his frazzled whiskers. Then he glared at his advisors, who grew silent. You think this is funny? He shouted, accidentally poking himself in the eye with his hook paw. Everyone tried not to laugh. Meanwhile, Oscar pulled Kitty and Scout aside to tell them about the energy problem. Well, if we don't use a lot of electricity and gas, then we will not have as much Pollution, said Kitty helpfully. Trisula rolled her eyes. Who cares about pollution? She snorted, patting her head. I'm having an important fur crisis here. I'm not worried about the fur dryer, but we sell gas we can't use to speed food. Oscar said he thought for a moment. Or the cat glider, he added. He ignores we sell the electricity. We can't use our computers or charge our phones, Scout added. Teresa was I grew white. No phones, she gulped. No phones, Kitty repeated. So you can't call or text any of your friends. A golden statue. What a tragedy, Teresa meowed. Daddy, you've got to do something. I'm a teenager. I can't live without my phone. Soon everyone was whining again. Kara Drew clapped his paws for attention. Silence, he ordered. Then he looked around the room. I didn't bring all you scientists here just to gripe. I bought you I brought you all here so I, you'd get your tails in gear and find a solution to our problem. Who we'll stop meowing and start moving? The scientists look at one another blankly. No one had any brilliant ideas. Just then Dr. Redford meowed excitedly. He turned to Cowardrome. I've got it. You're a full Excellency, your furriness, your heavy eyeness, I mean, cowardrome, she announced. The king narrowed his eyes as the cat began digging through her back. First, she pulled out a pair of pajamas, then a bathroom, a toothbrush, some toothpaste, a brush, fluffy socks, and a bar of soap from her back. I never know how long these urgent meetings are going to last, she explained matter-of-factly. Finally, she found what she was looking for. It was a map of Mouse Island. Here is the solution, Dr. Redford exclaimed. The rest of the cast stared at the map, confused. Uh, what are we going to do with the map, Dr. Redford asked Bonzo. Are we going to burn it and use it as fuel? asked Bruce. Scratching his head, Dr. Redford laughed. Don't be an alley cat, she chided. She pointed a cloud at the port of New Mouth City. You see this, she asked. Yes, it's Mouse Liberty. Mousy Liberty, responded Kitty. Exactly, said Dr. Redford. According to my scientific calculations, it is the only treasure that we should be able to reach without the use of high-powered boat. We can take the Black Hurricane. All we have to do is get to the island and steal the statue. And we want to steal an old statue because, Bonzo murmured, Bewildered because an old statue is made of gold, Dr. Redford finished, smiling proudly. At the mention of gold, Tristilas's ears perked up. She loved gold almost as much as she loved tuna fish. And Oscar asked, But are you sure the statue is made of gold, Dr. Redford's fur ruffled? What king of question is that? Of course, I am sure the statue is made of gold. We are scientists, and therefore, we have scientific proof. The statue is yellow, right? And gold is yellow, isn't it? So the statue is made of gold, she insisted. Oscar and the twins stared at Dr. Redford skeptically. What kind of scientific fruit proof was that? What happened to research? What happened to evidence? But the king had heard enough. Of course, that makes perfect sense to me. If the statue is yellow, it's, it's obviously gold. Karadruna agreed. Then he has to get everyone's attention. Listen up, everyone! Tomorrow we will meet in the top secret locations to prepare for a trip to New Mouth City, he declared. Information about Statue of Liberty. 
In New York, the Statue of Liberty is located in the United States of America, in New York, very close to the island of Manhattan. It is a gift that the French gave to the United States in 1886 to celebrate the 100th anniversary of American independence. In Paris, to celebrate the 100th university of the French Revolution in 1889, the United States gave a gift to France, a bronze copy of the original statue. This statue is in Paris. It is only 37 feet tall, while the original is 151 feet tall. And the New Mouth City! The New Mouth City Statue of Liberty, also known as Mouse Liberty, was constructed after the Great War of Wrath and Cat. The statue holds a piece of teeth in one paw, and in the other, a book with the words of the New Mouth City anthem written on it. The seven points on its crown symbolize freedom. The p p password? The next day, Caradon, Bonzo, Bruce, Tursula, and the rest of the king's advisors headed to the secret meeting palace in the underground offices of the Cat Island Most Wanted Headquarters. It's a place where they study all the ways to catch mice, like uh, me, Geronimo Stilton. Remember, this mission needs to be top secret, Caradon reminded everyone as they reached the Sanford office group. But before they could put in the password, a cat in slippers and a rope came shuffling out, complaining, This place stinks! The water in the shower is ice cold! The king... It... The king arched his back. What is the meaning of this? What is this stray doing in our secret headquarters? She shrieked. Boost chewed his pony. Um, it's nothing to worry about, your villainous, he soothed. I thought it would be a good idea to rent out the space. Instead, we are low on cash. You mean anyone can come stay here? Carol Drone demanded. No, of course not. Not anyone, Booth explained. I mean, they need to pay up first. And then I give them the password. The king gasped. The p password? He mumbled and he fainted. Two hours later, the king woke up. By then, his ass. Officers had already organized the plan to sail to New York City and steal the golden statue. Later that day, Howard Drum laid out the plan to his crew. First, they would prepare the king's ship, the Black Hurricane, for the voyage. Then, once they arrived at the port of New York City, they would knock the statue out with cannonballs. And they would tie it to the ship and drag it back for Fort Foley. It's a perfect plan. We sail at dawn, the king announced. The Pirates cast play plan. Number one, we leave. Number two, we fire. Number three, we steal. It's so simple, the plan to me. Let's save the ocean floor. Meanwhile, Scout, Kitty, and Oscar have listened to Counter Drone's plan also, thanks to a two-way radio hidden in the most wanted headquarters. What a strange plan. What a strange plan, remarked Oscar. It's not just strange, Uncle is fur raising. Dragging the statue through the sea would damage the ocean floor and hurt a lot of animals, Kitty will. We've got to deal with Geronimo Stilton, Scal said. How do you reach him? I wish I could say the cats decided to send me a cheesogram, but they didn't. Too bad, I just love cheesograms. You get a big basket food with different types of cheese, and then your message is spelled out with chocolate cheesy chews. Yum! But where was I? Oh yes, just then Oscar had an idea. You see, Oscar's eldest daughter, Samantha, loved reading my books. In fact, she even traveled to Niagara Falls, a place I described in one of my bestsellers. Take out my adventure field trip to Niagara Falls. The ocean floor, a treasure worth saving. The information of it. The ocean floor is host to hugely diverse, unique species of animals and vegetation. Forests of algae and coral are found there, as well as custodians, fish, and micro. Microscopic forms of all kinds. Parts of the ocean floor that are rocky most host many types of fish, urchins, starfish, mussels, oysters, crabs, and lobsters. Parts that are sandy are preferred habitat for sole, ray, seahorses, octopi, and shrimp. Some types of fishing, like trawling, the plants 
and animals that live on the ocean floor in serious danger. The fishing nets, the fishing nets are dragged on the floor and destroy the flora and fauna of the ocean. Did you know that the longest mountain chain in the world is underwater? It is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and it extends from the Atlantic Antarctic Ocean through the Atlantic Ocean, partly from one end of the Earth to the other. Its length is four times greater than the Himalayas, the Rocky Mountains, and the Andes Mountains put together. I know family communities with that literary read all the time. After explain, she sends messages to him using a carrier pigeon, and I know just where to find the old bird. Good idea, Uncle. The kitten smiled happily. Tuxi and Killer. The next morning, as the carrier pigeon flew toward New York City with the message to the pirate cat prepared to board the Black Hurricane. Carrie Drone was already on the boat, relaxing in his royal suite. At the top of the gangplank, Bonzo recited the names of those who were, part who were to participate in the mission of a solemn tone. Dr. Regina Fredford, Simon Scarsnout, and Princess Tarsilla. Just then, Tarsilla stormed onto the gangplank, waving a paper in her paw. Bonzo, wake up! Didn't you get the new order? she asked, smacking him in the snout of with a piece of paper. No, the king didn't say anything, Monzo began. Tarsila interrupted him. Don't worry about the king. Dad is watching his favorite TV show, Mouse Hunters. You don't want to disturb him. You know he gets you know how he gets, she warned. Monzo shivered. If there was one thing he knew about Catadrone, it was never to bother him when he was watching one of his shows unless he wanted your fur rearranged. Okay, said Bonzo, taking the paper from Tursula. Um, it says here that Dexy and Killer will round out our crew, he read. Hmm, I've never heard of them before. Tursula led the two cats on board. I'll show them the ropes, she said, pushing past Bonzo. Bonzo wasn't sure what to make of the new cat, but he didn't have time to think about it. It was time to set sail. Monzo got to work immediately. In fact, he was so busy helping the crew, he didn't notice two other furry figures creeping up the gangplank. Look, a bird! Back on Mouse Island, I was having a nice peaceful morning at the office of the Rudis Gavin. The electricity had finally turned back on, and I was showing the proof of my new book on saving energy to my nephew Benjamin and his friend Bugsy Wooksy. Look! Bird Street, Booksy. He's a carrier pigeon, observed Benjamin. He's got a message tied to his leg. The pigeon began to zigzag all over the room. So much for a peaceful day at the office. I'll handle this, Uncle G, Booksy cried, jumping onto the desk. A second later, she launched herself at the pigeon, but instead of catching him, she knocked over the bust of Grandfather's short paws. No! I yelled, diving for the statue. Grandfather's short paws never would have forgiven me if it had broken. My surprise, I caught it just in the nick of time. Why was I surprised? Well, let's just say I'm not very athletic. No one would call me a sportsman. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yes. I was watching a pigeon circling over my head when something occurred to me. I wonder if Samantha Wild Whisker sent this pigeon, I said. You mean that cat to secretly read your books, asked my nephew? I nodded. She sends carrier pigeons to get in touch with me. Just as I was thinking about Samantha, my secret Philip fan, two things happened. One, the pigeon dropped a rolled up note on my desk. Two, and two. And two, the pigeon dropped a stink bomb on my head. Black, looks like our pigeon friend wants us to know that the message is for you, Bugsy Wuxy said, giggling. Ew, splat. What should I wear? What should I wear? After scrubbing my fur with hot water and industrial strings, chitter center soap, I returned to my office to read the note. When I did, my fur stood on and cheese niblets. The message wasn't from Samantha, it was from Kitty and Scout, two of the children of the King of the Pirate Cats. No said that the cats were on their way to Mouse Island. They have set sail on the ship the Black 
Black Hurricane and we're out to steal our beloved Mount Liberty. The new Mount City Statue of Liberty? But why would they want that? Bugsy wondered aloud. I don't know, I murmured, my mind reeling. A ship full of cats headed for Mouth Island. What should I do? What should I say? What should I wear? After all, a suit and tie exi were in exactly fine clothes. Maybe I could find some boxing gloves. I was still thinking about boxing gloves when Jen Benjamin piped up. I have an idea. What is the thing that cats fear the most? He asked. Water against attack dogs? Bugsy suggested. Benjamin shook his head again and again until finally Buck sealed. We give up! What is it? Then Benjamin leaned in close to us and whispered his idea, which, I must say, was fabulous. Did I mention that my nephew is not only sweet and generous, but is also super smart? On the Black Hurricane. Meanwhile, the Black Hurricane crossed the dark half nip ocean headed toward Mouth Island. Unfortunately for the cats, it wasn't all smooth sailing. In fact, as soon as they left Fort Feline, they met up with the furious storm. Gust of wind howled like Catadrone's cousin hairless when he once fell overboard. Yikes! As the ship bobbed up and down, far below in the storeroom, two stowaways shivered. They were Kitty and Snout. My stomach meow scowled, turning green for seasickness. Didn't I tell you it wasn't a good idea to eat that tuna sub before we boarded? Kitty scolded her brother. Did you have to mention tuna scout? Wailed. The kittens weren't the only ones whining. On deck, the crew had broken out into a noisy fight. Ouch! You stepped on my paw! Yelled the cat. Watch the tail! Meowed another. Don't make me claw you! Fish breath warned someone else with an all out brawl. Before long, your piercing yowls joined the rumbling thunder and crackling lightning overhead. If you ask me, those cats all needed some anger management sessions or maybe just a relaxing yoga class to de stress. 10 Golden Speedboats. While the fighting raged above deck, Kitty and Scout. Will waited for the storm to end. Suddenly, they heard a laugh coming from the staircase and the voice of his pirate cat descending into the storeroom. It was Drusilla, along with the two new crew members, Tuxie and Killer. Quick, hide, whispered Kitty. The twins immediately climbed into two barrels filled with stinky food. The sign on one barrel read, freeze-dried cod cakes, only the highest quality fish. The second barrel contained powdered milk. Just add water and lap it up. Lunch! I never want to eat another cod cake as long as it lives, Rumble Scout. We better keep quiet, warned Kitty, or you won't live long enough to eat anything. We can't tell Trisla discovers us. Trisla, Tuxie, and Killer reached the storeroom just as the kittens pulled the lids over the barrel. The plan is perfect, exclaimed Tuxie. Shh! We don't want to be heard, responded Tursula. Now let's review. I want to be sure that you understand the plan. Duxie and Killer looked at her fearfully. Um, you start, Duxie. You are smarter than I am, Killer Mumbo. Oh, oh, oh no. Go ahead, Kill. You're better at explaining things, Duxie countered. Meow! You hopeless strays, Tursula cried. Must I repeat myself again? This time, listen carefully. But Dad wants to drag the giant statue from Mouth Island all the way across the ocean back to Fort Fulton. Even a kitten could see that's an impossible feat. While my dear dad wastes his time bombing the whole statue, we will use a small blast of dynamite to break off the slightest part. The piece of cheese, Duxie and Killer examine in unison. Exactly. That piece, will, that piece alone is worth at least 10 bonus peoples and will be transportable even with a tiny motorboat. Ursula finished. Killer clapped his paws happily. I get it. Now we just have to swim back to Cat Island, get a motorboat, drive it back to New York City, and bad boat. Ursula cut him off with his piercing lair. Don't be a fool, killer, she mouthed. First, you're not going to swim back to Cat Island. We're cats. We hate water. You steal a motorboat at UML City. Then, killer will climb up the statue to the piece of cheese and position the dynamite so that the cheese falls into the motorboat. Why do I have to go and not Duxie? Killer protested. Oh, don't be such a kitten, Duxie shot back. 
I'm not a kitten. You're a kitten. Killer whine. No, you are. No, you are. Quit the whining before I throw you two overboard, Drizzle hissed, pulling the two cats apart. If she could just get these two fur brains to cooperate, she could steal the goodest cheese and she'd be rich, rich, rich. Dum, dum, dum. After Tursula and her two helpers left, Kitty popped them from the bear room she was hiding in. Phew, that was a close call, she told Scout. You're telling me, said Scout. It's a good thing Tursula wasn't looking for a snack. You know how she loves these cod cakes, only the highest quality fish, Kitty giggled. But before the two could climb out of their hiding spots, they heard heavy positives at the top of the stairs. As they listened, the positives came closer and closer. Dum, 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 dum. It was Bonzo carrying some platters filled with smelly leftover fish. What is this place, Cat Central Terminal? Scout grumbled as the twins hit again. Bonzo arrived, mumbling to himself. Meow! The boss sure can pack it in. I never saw a caddy so much in all my nine lives. Now let me see what I can do with these leftovers. Katie and Snow paired her breast as Bonzo stumbled around the store, leaking for an empty container. At last he found one. This will do, he said. I can carry it up the aider when the boss wants a snack. And so, without knowing it, he dumped the leftovers right in your scout, snout and Kitty's hiding spot. This is perfect, Scout, said Kitty. The container is big enough that we can both hide in it under all those fish spoons. And you hear what Bonzo said. He's coming back later to bring it up as a snack for Dad. He carries it up to the deck without knowing. No one will see us. Good idea, agreed Scout. Then we can cut the ropes that the cats are planning to use to tie the statue, Kitty continued. Scout nodded. There's only one problem. What's that? asked Kitty. The problem is I don't know if I'm going to be able to survive more of the stench. Land who? At dawn on the tenth day of the trip, the lookout cat yelled an announcement that woke everyone up. Land who? Mouth Allen poor sight! Poor sight means the left side of the boat toward the back boat, the front of the boat. Car Catardon stood on deck as the black hurricane entered the deserted port of New Mouth City. Oscar Wild Wild Whiskers was there too. His royal cousin had insisted he write an article about her adventure to publish in the paper when the cats returned to Fort Fulton. I hope you're getting all of this down, cuz the king ordered. I want a full page spread in the cat land courier. The deadline could read something like Clever King makes off with mouse goat. We're just King Encounter Drone 3. We're courageous hero. Our courageous hero. Or maybe he trailed off deep in thought. Oscar rolled his eyes. Ever since his cousin had been naming, named King, he had fallen in love with himself. While the king continued rambling on and on, Kitty and Scout watched nervously from inside the container of stinky fish bones that Bonzo had brought up on deck. They had cut the rope so that the statue couldn't be towed under the ocean. Now they scanned the port for any sign of Geronimo Stilton. Where was he? There wasn't a road in his sight. Had the pigeon delivered the kitten's message? Pay up the statue. Repair the cannons. Let's Take this gold mine down and bring it home, shouted Caradron. Who cut the ropes? Bonzo interrupted the king. Wait, your fellowness. The ropes to tie up the statue have been cut and can't be used, he exclaimed. What? Cut? Who would do such a thing? meowed the king. I don't know, your fellowness, responded Bonzo. Of course you don't know. Why do I let you handle anything? Where's Booth? Maybe he knows something for a change. Booth! Booth, where are you? He shrieked impatiently. Here I am, your catship. At your service, responded Booth, rushing up to his boss. Counter drone explained his disrobed situation to him, waving his paws wildly. Find me the traitor immediately and find a way for us to take the statue, he insisted. Booth smiled. Problem solved, your furriness. I thought some joker might try to stop us, so I brought extra rope, he said proudly. Did you just say you thought? How dare you? I'm the only one who gets to think around here, the king 
Bruce nodded and quickly wiped the smile off his face. Carter Drone continued. Of course I knew we brought extra robes. You don't have to tell me. I'm the one who thought of it. Ha ha ha. Then turn to Oscar, he said. Make sure you're getting all this down, cuz. I want this in my biography someday. Everyone must know that I am a king who thinks ahead. I am smart. I am courageous. I am... 20 minutes later, Carter Drone was still babbling on and on about why he was such a brilliant king. The twins listened to their dad with heavy heart. Now what are we going to do, Kitty White? They think like rotten fish! They had only one other idea, begging. The two kittens leaned out of their hiding spot. Daddy, listen, they mouthed. You can't drag the statue all the way back to Cat Allen, who killed so many plants and animals in the sea. Aha! Uh -huh. You should have known you two had something to do with this, Caradrone said. Don't be such party poopers. Now step aside. Daddy has to give them important orders, then he yelled. All pop on deck. Puff! The first light of dawn was coming over the horizon, and Numa City was beginning to wake up. The pirate cats began to execute their plan to steal the statue. Grappling hooks with rope attached were shot toward the statue. When it was finally wrapped in rope, Tyler Drone ordered the cats to point the cannons at a pedestal. Are you ready to knock it over? Fire! The king ordered. Sailor lit the fuses and everyone clapped their paws to their ears. But instead of the terrible boom they were expecting, the cannons made only a puff, tiny puff sound. What is the meaning of this, Caradron wrote. Your felinus, someone is out to stop us. All the cannonballs have disappeared, declared the sailor. Steam shot out of Caradron's ears. His tail stood at attention. What happened to them, he snarled. Someone must have thrown them in the sea. Sailor replied, but who, yelled Caradron. Just then, the king turned to see Scout and Kitty trying to sneak away unnoticed. You too, he meowed. If I find out you too are behind the disappearing cannonballs, you'll get no more Kitty Crispy trees for the rest of the year. Oscar, who had helped the twins throw the ammunition into the sea, tried to help. Don't be too hard on them. After all, they meant well, he reasoned. Meant well, Ward countered Grown. Well, if they meant to drive their old dad perfectly mad, when, then they succeeded. Bro, meanwhile, during the general confusion of flying, grappling hooks and cannons that didn't fire, no one noticed that Tursla, Dixie, and Clara was soon. Missing. Where did they go? Taking advantage of all the chaos on deck, they had lowered themselves down to the water, aboard a life raft, and started rowing away from the ship. Keep rowing, cats. We need to move it if we want to beat my father to that statue. Tursula shouted as they headed toward the port of New Mill City. Dexy and Killer roared, roared, roared with all their might. As they neared the shore, they spotted a mortar boat they could steal. When they reached it, they were ready to grab the golden cheese and race back to Cat Island. You're going to be rich, 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 Tarsina predicted. But she was wrong. Flee them! As soon as Tarsila and her accomplices reached the docks of New Mill City, a surprise was waiting for them. Within seconds, they were attacked by an army of fleas. My nephew Benjamin had figured out the, that the best way to keep the cats away was to hit them with their biggest fear. Fleas, didn't I tell you he was smart? Anyway, as the cats approached, the queen of the flea army called out, Flee them! Tursula, Tuxie, and Killer froze in their tracks. Clouds of hungry fleas filled the air. Meow, the cats cried. Duxie and Killer grabbed the oars and began to row away as fast as their paws could move. Thor salmon sticks, they're right behind us, Tursla wailed. From the deck of the Black Hurricane, Scout watched in shock as the life raft sped back to the ship. What's going on, he shouted to Tursla, but it was so noisy on the ship he couldn't hear her answer. Get down right now! Caradone was yelling at the top of his lungs. I want every whisker on dick. This is a c 
catastrophic emergency. We need to knock down that monument and we don't have one single cannonball to do it. I want everyone to think of a plan. Now, he ordered. While the crew frantically tried to come um, up with an idea, Kitty Yang uncovered Drone's leaf. Um, there, she said, do you really want to know that Tursula took off with the life raft and, but the king wasn't listening. Is everyone thinking? He warned. I want to hear the wheels turning thing in your little brains. Then he turned to the scientist from the cow lab. Come on! Where are all your brilliant ideas now? The king demanded. Just then, Bonzo coughed. Cotodrone glared at him, then turned back to the scientist. Well, I'm waiting for those ideas, he meowed impatiently. And if I don't get a good one, I've decided I'm going to knock down the statue with Bonzo's head. It's probably the same size as a cannonball. Bonzo gulped. Then he climbed up the mast. Come down, Yota King! I need your head! Sorry to disturb you. Right at that moment, a small voice called out from the top of Mousy Liberty. I'm sorry to disturb you. It was coming from a small balcony behind the crown on the statue. It was me, Geronimo Stilton. After reading the note from the twins, Benjamin and Buxy were up there with me, enjoying the view. We had finalized our plan of defense. Then we scurried our then we scurried over to the statue to the to get things started. Hey, said Mr. Stilton. Kitty cheered happily when she saw me. She and Scout secretly stopped pop in celebration. Carter's room was less room. It's that rat, she scowled. What are you doing here? Who told you we were coming? Tell me who the tra traitor is. Wait till I get my paws on him. But I shook my head. There was no way I was going to rat out the twin. Sorry, but a true gentleman must never reveal his sources, I answered, waving my paw. Then I grinned. But since I heard that you were visiting our city, I wanted to give you a warm welcome after such a long trip. So I took the liberty of asking some of your old friends to join me. The king scratched his head. Did he say friends? He asked Bruce. Friends of ours in the city of mice? Who do you think he's squeaking about? Before the two pirates could figure it out, the entire army of fleas began heading towards the Black Hurricane. They zipped along the ropes that the cats had rigged up to pull down the monument. In a flash, the cats realized they were in a danger and began racing around the ship's deck and yelling, Ah, fleas! The, the only one who didn't panic was Oscar Wild Whiskers. He calmly took charge. In a commanding voice, he yelled to the sailors, Cut the ropes, quick! Raise the anchor! Grab the oars! To save our fur! We are doomed! To bad none of the sailors were listening to Oscar. Instead, they continued running around and around in circles, meowing at the top of their lungs. Help! Here they come! You're doomed! Just when it looked like the cast would be scratching for the rest of their lives, Scout had an idea. Hey, Kitty! He exclaimed. Remember the invention that Dr. Redford was talking about? Gun Pat Allen? It was an anti-flea portable shower system. Kitty clapped her paws. That's a great idea. Scout, let's find Dr. Redford. She cried. The twins took off in search of Dr. Redford. They found the scientists hiding below deck. Dr. Redford, you've got to use your anti-flea portable shower system. It will help us chase the flea away, Kitty said. But I don't want, I don't know if it works, responded. Responded Dr. Redford worriedly. We don't have a choice. Come with her. Come with us, now. Scout said. As soon as they were all on the deck, the king strode over with his paws on his hips. Listen up, Redford. You better make Dick's flea shower thing a thing and bob work, or you'll be taking a permanent shower in the sea, he threatened. The sound is gulped. She turned the shower on and whoosh the disinfectant rained down all over the deck of the boat and made all the fleas cough and gag. Yuck, what a terrible stench! It's unbearable! Retreat! yelled the queen of the fleas. Quick as a pair of alley cats, the twins out the rope that linked the ship to our mouthy liberty. The officer commanded the sailor. Now rolling, and the black hurricane began to slow to turn. 
The ship turned out of the port of Nima City and headed back toward Cast Island. As the cast were leaving, Caradron began to sob loudly. Wow! I almost had the golden statue in my hot free paws. What a waste! What a tragedy! Observe the scene from the top of the statue. I must say, it was pretty sad to see. The cast tongues were hanging out as they were owed the big ship through the ocean, and the king was so upset he looked like he needs weeks to recover. I feel so bad for the poor misguided cast. I picked up my megaphone and yelled, It's not all the bad, king. Our statue isn't even made of gold. It's just yellow, like cheese, our favorite food. Hooray for Geronimo Stilton! The next day, the citizens of New York City organized a big party in my honor to celebrate our triumphs over the pirate cast. Hooray for Geronimo Stilton! Hooray for Mousy Liberty! They cheered. The men never pulled me aside. I was wondering, Uncle, do you think Kitty and Scout will get in trouble with their dad if he finds out they were the ones who sent you the warning? He asked. Don't worry, Benjamin, I said. I think everything will be okay. Tomorrow I'll ride to Samantha Wild Whiskers, their cousin, to find out what happened. I was pretty sure that once the cats made it back home, they would be so relieved to have escaped the fleece that they wouldn't think about Mouth Alice for a long while. Everybody piddle! As the Black Hurricane neared the port of their fort filling, the cats made out signs of release. They were glad to be home to be totally flea free. Phew! Of course, there was one cat who was still complaining about the trip to Mouth Island, and that was King Counter Drone 3. Just to make himself feel better, he insisted that he'd known the instant he spotted Mouthy Liberty that it was not made of gold. I just knew it, the king ranted. No one believed that was true. The true, this was true, but they didn't dare to contradict the king. You look like fools in front of those rats, Cowardron continued. You want the electricity turned back on? Forget it! Start peddling bicycle power generators. That's where you'll get electricity. The counter drone tracked down Tursula and her friends and demanded she explain why she ran off. Daddy, I didn't run off. I saw the fleece and was trying to help. She insisted. The king rolled his eyes. Nice try, but I'm not buying it, he meowed. A punishment, you'll be in charge of cleaning up after the carrier pigeons. Am Am you zing my paw? When the ship pulled into the dock, Counter Drone was ready to head home. He needed a long cat nap. Instead, he got hit over the head with an umbrella. Son, I need electricity this instant. It's been weeks since Tabitha has been able to use the fur dryer on me. An elderly cat screeched. It was the king's mother, and she was furious. Her fur looked like a bird's nest, but your fur looks amusing, the king tried. Amusing, my paw. Caradron's mother rat. She pulled her son by the tail over to her bicycle power generator and forced him to pedal late into the night. The rotors gathered editorial office a special dedication. As for me, well, as soon as the party ended, I ran back to the rotors gathered. Then I closed myself in my office to finish my new book. I called it Shocking Ideas to Save Electricity. And you want to know something? It was a big success. Practical advice to save energy. Sometimes saving energy is just as a matter of all a few small tricks. Here's some advice. Take advantage of daylight as best you can. Always turn off lights you aren't using. Use energy efficient light bulbs. Dust your lamps periodically. A clean lamp gives off more light. Rediscover activities that don't use electricity, such as board games and outdoor games. Don't leave electronic devices, computers, televisions, DVD players, speakers, etc. in standby mode. Turn them off. Keep doors and windows closed when heat or air conditioning is on your house. If it's cold outside, put a sweatshirt or sweater indoors so you don't have to turn up the heat. If it's hot out, instead of turning on the air conditioner, draw the shades or close the blinds to help keep your house cooler. My book was selling out like cheesecake ice cream on a sizzling summer day. And do you know why? Well, for three simple reasons. Number one, because the blackout had 
had an effect on everyone in New Mouth City. Number two, because it was full of good advice on how to save electricity. Number three, because inside the book there was an embarrassing photo of the illustrious king by the pirate cat being forced to pedal a bicycle power generator. Do you know who sent me the photo? It was Scout and Kitty, the very same carrier pigeon that they had used before before it came fitting once again through my office window. I dropped the message on my dick and once again left a special little surprise on my head. Ugh! Before I looked at the message, I was ready to scream. But when I saw the photo of Crane Coward drone, I laughed so hard I started choking. My secretary, Mousella, rushed in to see if I was okay. I showed her the picture and she started laughing too. Damn the carrier pigeon. I sent him back with some organic bird seed and some coral mint dried worms. And to thank my Feline friends, I included a special dedication in my book and sent them a photo of our staff. It read for Samantha, Scout, and Kitty. Thanks for saving our precious mousy liberty. Geronimo Stilton. That was the book I read, and if you want more audiobook videos like this, please consider subscribing. This will help me make more, make better videos develop, and also this is a massive support. So thank you for watching, and I hope I can see you in the next one. Take care.